Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and you are tuned in to the review of Married at First Sight Season 12, Episode 10. So, before I get started, don't forget to click the subscribe button or the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when I post these videos. So, new background. I want to share with you guys that we closed on a house at the beginning of this month and so we're in our new house right now. Um, we moved over the weekend, so it's been a lot and in a good way, but... I've been busy, 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 trying to get things in order. Moving with an infant is a new experience. And if you guys have kids, then you know what that's like. So I'm a little late to the party this week, but I wanted to just jump in and give you my two cents about this week's episode. Um, so I actually thought this week's episode was a good episode. I felt like there was a lot of content there. I'm not gonna go into everything because I just, time is not on my side this week. Um, but I felt like the last few weeks, really this season, I've been struggling to watch. I mean, yes, it's been drama filled. So it's like, in some ways it's easier to watch because you're just like sitting there with your mouth open, like this cannot be real. But then it's been, as we all know, cause we've been talking and chatting and I see the comments, it's been disheartening to watch because it's just like, this doesn't feel right anymore. Um, but I felt like they got in deeper this, this week. So I want to touch base on that. Um, I'm going to start, so I'm going to switch it up this week. I'm going to start with Chris and Paige. I usually end with them. But in the spirit of not wasting time that I'll never get back, I'm not going to um, end with them. I'm just going to kick it off with them. So Chris and Paige, first of all, Dr. Viviana this week visited all of them. And she sat with them and touched base on things. This is what I'd love to see happen more often. It's like the experts are non-existent. And I know they have particular roles to fill, but... If they had this weekly touchstone, they would actually last, you know? And at this point, we don't, you know, we don't know that that's the goal anymore because of some things that we have seen. We'd like to think that it is. Um, but yes, so Dr. Viv, she visits all of them and, and I think she did a great job in her connection to them and helping them with certain things. Um, Chris and Paige, you know, I don't know why they're still on the show. Uh, besides the the need to be on there because of contractual obligations. But right now it just feels very forced. It feels very production uh, swindled because there is no reason why Paige should still be waiting for this man. Um, he is so double-minded, which is why their whole uh, situationship, cause I'm not going to call it a marriage, has been um, so chaotic. And... I was hoping that she, you know, this doesn't serve me. I was hoping that she really stepped it up and, and stood up for herself, but it, she didn't really follow through. It was painful, once again, to watch. Le a little less painful because, like, now it's like, girl, you know, you can only do, people can only do what you let them do. You're letting him do this. He is a clown. C is for clown. C is for Chris, the clown. And... She's still sitting there waiting for him to make a decision. He says one thing, he does another. Um, it's all about Chris. You know, you have to cater to Chris. Even when he mentioned Bible study, because I'm jumping around because they're so insignificant. Um, when he mentioned Bible study, instead of saying, first of all, he, present, he says he's a man of God. He's presented like everything but, and he can't take the lead. It's everybody catering to him. Chris has a tantrum. It's about his emotions. It's about how he feels. Um, you know, he says things that don't add up. He, he's not comfortable doing certain things and even bringing up something like, okay, let's do a Bible study, um, which I think he's just playing around with God at this point. Um, he doesn't even assert himself to say, Hey, I'll do something. He doesn't even come with anything for that. So that was really frustrating because here she is just trying and trying and she's chasing him. And like, we are the prize, you know, like biblically, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. We are the prize. Like, I don't, he is the prize. He's the lady in the relationship. They chase, Chris is chasing, I'm sorry, Paige is chasing Chris and it, does, it doesn't It does feel right. It doesn't look right. Um, and it just supports his antics. It is supports his bad behavior. And it was just, I, I'm just sick of, of watching her go back and forth to be honest and and hope that he does differently and believe in him and, and take the scraps he's giving her scraps at this point and he still can't consistently do that she's sitting there so i'm like you know is this is this real you know at this point did they sign up to do something else and just give us good good you know or or dramatic content because i don't know why she's sticking there 
Um, she keeps hiding under the umbrella of God and God gives us wisdom. So you're not using your wisdom. We can't just do what we want to do and then say, oh, well, God, God, let that happen. No, you let that happen. You know, there are many signs, there are many red flags and you keep putting your black and white shades on and you just acting like you don't see them. So it's hard for me at this point to feel bad for her. Like there's a part of me that sees where that may stem from, which gives me a little more patience than most. But at this point, you have seen so many things. You know, he, he tells you after he's missing for a few days that he bought his, the, the wife, uh, the, the mother of his child. And we, we know, unfortunately, that is no longer um, a Mercedes. It's just, it's just constant slap on the face slap on the face and she turns the other cheek if both cheeks have been slapped she ices one to make sure that it's ready for the next slap like I, I can't so Chris and Paige they're like um, a non-factor it's just I want to touch on this because we look at it but somebody is going through that right now lots of people are going through that and so I my only hope in watching them or in people watching them is that they get like or women really um, if we're going to identify with Paige here is that they get like a light bulb moment where they recognize the extent and the gravity of the mistreatment by watching it, you know? So that's Chris and Paige. Um, next we have Ryan and Clara. So I, I don't, I really don't know anymore. Okay. You guys know, I feel like Ryan and Clara are mismatched. Um, but the things that they're saying, the way that they're presenting doesn't connect energetically for me. Like energetically, I don't see this chemistry. I don't see where they connect. I see where there are some really strong foundational things where they don't connect. But for some reason, you know, they're saying they, they, they would have been friends outside of this. That surprises me because I don't think they would have even been in the same circles. But okay, if that's working, if something's happening that we're not able to conceptualize, that's great. Um, but there's like a huge disconnect here in terms of like physical, physical affection and the importance of that. Um, if you know that book, The Five Love Languages, it really goes over like the five key component love languages that people have and its significance to each person and how the other person needs to be aware of that. So the five love languages are quality time, physical touch, gifts, acts of service, and um let's see quality time physical touch gifts acts of service and words of affirmation um so what's really important to note is that oftentimes people provide love in the way that they like to receive it and so it's missed received from the other person because they they're not reading it that way so if i like for example if i like gifts but my husband likes acts of service and he gives me or he you know let's say he gets my car washed or he does stuff around the house although that might be helpful if i identify love through gifts then it's gonna be a miss for me but if he likes acts of service and i like gifts and i buy him something he he might love it but that doesn't translate so where we're seeing this big disconnect is the way that they communicate physically and sexually um and I thought it was interesting when they met with Dr. Viv, um, the way that Clara really, like I got a deeper sense of who Clara is and kind of some of her background and how she struggled with tying sex to a significant emotion. Like for her, sex is sex. Sex is a physical act, it's sex. It doesn't necessarily have to coincide with something greater where a lot of people don't feel that way. A lot of people do feel that way too, but a lot of people with somebody that they're married married to or in a relationship with they tie sex to so much more sex means a connection sex means um it's kind of like a gift between the two of you all because you have a significance to each other where with somebody else it might just be that um but sex in that you know scope it means something and ryan is in a frame of mind where he wants it to mean something and What's interesting with Clara is that she doesn't even know how to make it mean something. So I would love, you know, I think therapy would benefit for her too because you saw her getting emotional because she's like, I don't know if I can ever get there with him. But you can also think, she, she Dr. Viv pointed out that she, she looks like she felt ashamed, which I agree, but she says she doesn't, but 
like physically I get a different story from her and I feel like she wants to at least find out or work that out for herself and I think that that would be great for her therapeutically to figure out that connection um because honestly like if you love someone and if and they're they are not in love yet but if you do love someone um and she says she's been in love so many times but we know that you know that's kind of in lust or in the idea of love because so many times casu casually is not really real um then sex is not just often sex M most i would say almost everyone ties it to the person that they love with so much more than just okay it's just sex even though sometimes you can just get it in and it is what it, it doesn't have to be this romantic fourth of july thing but to someone you love and care about and you're connected to it is often more than just that um so we saw her being kind of frustrated with that we saw her being frustrated with the fact that she expresses to dr viviana that they do everything else <laughs> everything else so we are having sex we're having some type of sex and that really rubs me the wrong way because ryan ryan is ryan's a nice guy i think that he is a little too controlling I don't think that he's giving enough opportunity to what could be. And if it's not for you, or if you say, hey, there's some fundamental things about this woman who I, although I really care about, is not gonna work long-term, then say that. But don't take advantage of the parts of what you're comfortable with. Um, don't take advantage of that and still pull away because here she is giving of herself and you're giving of yourself, I guess, in that way too. Um, but it's there's no room for compromise. And I'm glad that Dr. Viviana kind of pushed him a little bit because he, he just will give these very aloof answers, you know, we'll say sure, so many times and we never get anywhere. He's just not going to move. And if you're not gonna move, you shouldn't have been a part of this experiment because it's, it's about being open, it's about being more transparent. And he's not, he is just, we'll get there. What does that look like? You know, like, what does that mean? Well, of course, and I understood how he said, well, hey, I don't want to put a, a time frame on it because that means that, you know, it'll become a chore. I get there. I get that. But there has to be some sort of markers. You know, if you're running a marathon, like where where is the end? Because I'll get to a point where if there are no markers and there's no end, it's like, well, stop when you feel like you've won. Well, guess what? I've won and I'm getting an Oreo McFlurry from McDonald's right now. Done. <laughs> so... Ryan, he really needs to put in some work. Otherwise, I don't think, you know, I don't think if, if we're going based on what they're saying, which is that they do have a connection that's not necessarily very highly displayed, at least to me on TV. But if it's there um, and they enjoy each other and it's natural, then he really has to give more um, for them to get like for them to evolve. Um, right now, I don't see, even though I do think they're very different and I see fun, some fundamental things that aren't going to work, if there is some stuff that's working, he is getting in the way of more stuff working. Um, so we'll see. That's Ryan and Clara. Um, next, we have Jake and Haley. So once again, you guys know how I feel about Jake and Haley. Um, I don't think they're matched well. Um, you know, I think Jake is a nice guy. Uh, somebody said, somebody wrote a comment that I really, that was like thought provoking for me and I really hadn't thought about it like that. Um, we all say that Haley kind of shuts down and she doesn't communicate and, and Jake communicates really well and, and stuff like that. But sometimes Jake is pushy in a way that is off putting. I mean, sometimes we've seen him be somewhat explosive and um, it doesn't necessarily breed an environment to be open and transparent. Um, so J somebody said that Jake is not necessarily communicative of his feelings. He's just direct about what he wants to say. And so it appears because Haley is not saying as much, it appears um, that he's the communicator and she's not. But he's kind of like just brash and he says certain things, but we're not really getting to know Jake. It's not like he's opening up this this well of depth of who he is and she's not and he's frustrated he wants it to be moving in a certain direction and i get that um and she's just not into him that's it she wants to be into him she's seeing how not ready she she is for this process how not ready she is for this this marriage 
and some of her issues that she can't get around. And I loved that Dr. Viviana brought up what she wrote in her um, questionnaire, because we all could be guilty of saying, I will do, it's like, you know, when, when they ask you at a job interview, are you willing to do X, Y, Z? And you're like, absolutely. And then you walk in one morning and they're like, hey, can you? And you're like, oh, sure. You know, like, it's kind of like, yeah, we'll say it when we're not, we're not really in a space to have to do it. Um, but for her and for everybody, commitment is about being committed long after the emotion and the excitement of commitment passes okay so like it's exciting and easy to commit and then when it's time to really show that it may be more difficult but you still have to be committed it's like when you when somebody asks you to help them to move and you're like yeah sure next saturday of course next saturday comes and i want to fling myself off a building because guess what today i don't want to help you move but i committed so i have to get up and i have to do what i said i would do um and i love that she showed her kind of some of her issues because okay if it's not Jake, who you may not really be attracted to, and that's a biggie, and that's important. Okay, so she's not attracted to him, it may not work out. If it's not Jake, who you may not be attracted to, and who is obsessed with 80s things, and, and you, you're not really into that whole vibe, then it'll be someone else, because here are your issues, and that's really important. Um, but she's, you know, they're trying, you know, they, all the couples got uh, some questions that they answered and they ended up in bed, in the same bed, um, by the end of the episode. And that's, that's really telling that they weren't even sleeping in the same bed. I don't know if I knew that. I may have missed that because to be honest, some of these, some of these, uh, long episodes, I kind of zone out because it's just like a little too much. There's like stretching out whatever, but, um, the fact that they weren't sleeping in the same bed, I mean, that we've seen couples in the past not be attracted to each other and still sleep in the same bed. So Haley is checked out. Um, and it just might be best for them to, I don't know, I guess they're just being honest. I was going to say kind of exit stage left, but the, you know, once again, there's all these things that are in play that, that aren't really um, reflective of the relationship, you know, production and the contract and all these things. So I don't know. Um, but you can tell, I felt bad for her because I, I saw this week that she recognized, or she appeared to like really recognize, um, her issues and like really struggling and wanting to do better. But like, I can't, you know, like I, I really wanted to do better. I don't know how. Um, and I think that to circle back the person who made that comment I thought that that was so insightful because it is true like Jake is very direct and it, it seems that he communicates but we're not getting the depth of Jake we're just getting frustrated Jake frustrated for a reason but nonetheless frustrated Jake who is trying to get her to do anything which when somebody already tells you that they're kind of not attracted then that's like overwhelming if he could just relax a little bit because when they got into bed i know he was making a joke but it was like really to take her temperature she just got into bed y'all ain't even been sleeping in the same room like asking about cuddling and kissing with somebody literally told you that they're not attracted to you does not make you more attractive so i don't know we'll see once again i don't think they're a great match to begin with so i don't know well, well that's jake and Haley. All right, next we have Virginia and Eric. So, whew, Virginia and Eric, I, I've talked to you guys about both sides, how I, I thought it was, you know, a mismatch in the sense that she's she's young and she's in this party phase and, and uh, you know, he has been married already and he's, I don't know, like eight or ten years older than her and he wants to be settled. But a lot of their differences came out um this this week that were a little bit concerning like hmm could this be long term um my thing with with okay so my husband and I had had talked about this like weeks ago where Eric is like I'm done if this doesn't happen I'm done if I'm done and I was kind of like man what what happened in that past marriage you know because there's something that's triggering him and we found out this week that he shared that every relationship that he has been in they have cheated on him so okay ding 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 it makes perfect sense why he is so uncomfortable i wouldn't even say insecure he is uncomfortable and triggered by the trauma of his past 
to where and and here he is matched with this girl who wants to black out on her male friend's couches which it just you're married like blacking out on anybody's couch and being unable to pick up your phone and your spouse is calling like that it's ridiculous um but i total and i thought it was inappropriate on her male friend's couches too um but it totally makes sense why he feels the way that he feels because he has been hurt so badly in the past and but i do but I do feel like he needs to stop saying I'm done. You know, if if, if she doesn't want to have kids, I'm done. Like he has to, and that's like a um, uh, a saving complex. He's like, it's like self preservation for him. If I'm done with you first, then you can't be done with me. So if I bow out, if you don't have kids, boom, I don't get, you know, so attached to a point of no return or where it really really hurts me more. Um, so that's why he keeps doing that. But he has to find another way. And I think their conversation about you know her talking about her family and growing up and why she's scared to have children that's why when you and i i always said when she said she's 50 50 the first episode i said she'll have them like 50 50 sounds like eh, not now you know um because she didn't give me the vibe that she really didn't want them and i was like appreciative to see what her history was behind that and why she was afraid to have them um, and it was good to hear his history too, because that's hard. That's hard to say, listen, every relationship that I've had, somebody has been unfaithful to me. So what's wrong with me? That's hard. And honestly, he still hasn't figured it out yet. And it's not necessarily that something's wrong with him either. Um, we all have things that we can work on, but that's hard to, that's a very vulnerable place to be. Um, where they struggle though, is they're in this like pink cloud bubble of you know enjoying each other and getting along mostly even though we see areas that are like okay this is problematic but they're kind of brushing past it and now it's time to like really get into it and discuss these things that could be problematic where I feel like because up until now I'm like they can make it work you know give them a, in five years this relationship would be completely different because I think they'd be more settled it could be. They'd be more settled. She'd be more settled. Um, they would probably, sorry, they would probably align more on like family stuff, which is something that he's desperately wanting right now. And I could see it. But where he tends to be, and we saw the, the issue come up with Dr. Viv, where he tends to be very conservative, she, she tends to not be. And I, I don't, I mean, I have ideas of where I see or where I think that they have a big disconnect. Um, and I don't, and I think those could be problematic because those things are, you know, a lot of times people have like non-negotiables and I always say you should have like five non-negotiables where, and it's usually children, um, religion, uh, politics, etc., where people kind of, it's, it's kind of hard to build a life with someone and raise kids with someone when you're like so far left and so far right. And here you are together. Um, so I think they're going to struggle with that. And I think that will get in the way of the relationship, um, developing because she's so passionate about it and he's not, and he's kind of like, that's your issue. I'm not changing. There is no middle of the road for them. And these, to me, and they haven't talked about it, but I can infer. Um, to me, it seems like things that you need to be one side or the other. Um, and there's some people who are kind of like, whatever, middle of the road. I don't see either one of them being middle of the road. And so it might be problematic, especially when you throw kids in there. What way is the right way? What belief system is the right belief system? What is right? What is wrong? I think they're going to struggle with that. Um because at first, when I first started watching, I was like, you know, he doesn't have to be passionate about everything she's passionate about and vice versa. They just have to learn to respect each other and also not raise each other. So a lot of times when people get into relationships and you get into marriages specifically, because that's that's the one that you're going to really work on, um, people will say they'll try to like raise each other, you know, and you're marrying a fully grown adult. And so you have to learn to respect their their thought process or what's important to them and especially when you throw children in there maybe support certain things without being invested like there are certain things that my now these aren't like the heavy hitter stuff but there are certain things that my husband is really passionate about or thinks is really important that 
doesn't move me the same way because I was raised differently. So culturally, it was like not that big of a deal in my household. But for him, it was, you know, this is how you do it. This is how you address people, blah, blah, blah. And for me, culturally, there's certain things that this is what's appropriate. And he's not moved by it. But we've learned to say, okay, well, like in having children, we're going to support the, the, okay, well, if your dad wants this and I'm okay with that, then we're going to support that. But it doesn't necessarily have to be this thing that you're so passionate about. You can like respect each other's things without having to be a hundred percent in. However, there are some heavy hitter things that you kind of have to be on the same page about some of the things that I just named. I don't think they're on the same page about that as well as a few other things. I feel like we can all infer. Um, so I think that will get in the way. I really do. That stuff over time is problematic. It doesn't have to be once again, because I have like a friend who is married to someone, they have different um, religious beliefs. They've been together and it works and they learn to respect it. And you know, they're kind of raising their kids to choose as they get older, that's their deal. But I don't know many couples that can do that. Um, so that, I mean, we'll see. Eric and Virginia, they have potential, but they also have like a lot of things that, a lot of areas that could sink them. Um, so we'll see. Last we have Brianna and Vincent. So Brianna and Vincent, um, you know, they're still my faves. <laughs> I still think that they're great. They have stuff to work on, of course, but I still think that they are doing really well. Um, I'm glad that Dr. Viv kind of said what we've all been saying. Um, cause I've been reading the comments cause I thought that I missed the whole, how Brianna said that's so many of you. Um, and I think she did offer like some towels or something like that. Listen, we can't crucify her because she's more direct. And I saw it back. She, what she said was fine. How she said it was fine. We're not going to make her the way that she is, even if it's not even happening, responsible for the way that Vinny responds. Um, and even when somebody says something to you that you don't like in a manner, you don't like it, you're still responsible for your response. Um, so I watched that back and I was like, well, everybody who's saying she, she could have said it different or she could have got him towels. What were y'all watching? Cause it's not her. It's not. And she can be a certain way. Everybody's warned him, bossy, 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 very direct, but it's, it's not her. When we're seeing him flip out over certain situations, it's a lack of self-control triggered by insecurity and whatever issues come along with that or whatever situations in his past come along with that. So I'm glad that he said that um, Dr. Viv kind of talked about that. They talked about salsa night. Um, they talked about him wanting to look a certain way, wanting to be perfect. And that's not realistic. And honestly, perfect, first of all, perfect doesn't exist. But it's not realistic because it's not fun. It doesn't make you like a real person because you're so in your head about what things should be that you're missing what is. And then you're frustrated and it, it ruins the moment and it's not good coping skills. So I'm glad that they kind of brought that up. Um, and I'm glad that the responsibility is on him because a lot of times women are conditioned to be responsible for um, the way a man reacts or the, the way a man, re you know, responds or what he does. And, you know, well, he called me this. Well, what were you wearing? You know, if, if an abuse thing happened, what did you say? Did you trigger him? That's bullshit. And y'all know I don't really go there on here, but that that's a problem because society is always conditioning a woman to be responsible for how a man, you know, responds. Like, well, if you're walking in the parking lot, and a guy says something to you, you have to say hello back because you can make him upset. If he holds the door for you, of course say thank you. But if you don't say thank you, then it's okay that he curses you out or says something rude because you didn't say thank you. What If someone says hello, you have to say hello back. You don't. What if I'm having a bad day and I walk by? But he can call you a B-I-T-C-H or, or it's a thing. Society conditions women to have to be responsible for their own safety, for the responses of men a lot of times, for the triggers, for the traumas. And now it's like, well, help him, which in marriages, we help each other 100%. But she cannot be responsible for something that he brings that he is not in control of, that is really inappropriate and harmful to every relationship, including that marriage. 
So that's my two cents. I still love Vinny though, by the way. I'm just saying I have to get on my soapbox about that because it's just like, it's just always something, always something. And, and I think most women will understand that. Um, and that isn't fair. It, he is responsible for her emo for his emotions, just like she is responsible for her emotions. He is responsible for the way that he responds, just like she is responsible for the way that she responds. Now, yes, if your spouse says something crazy to you, you can pop off. And yes, they trigger that. That I'm not talking about that. We're talking about simple things that are becoming bigger things because of some past stuff that has nothing to do with her. So that is my two cents. I tried to keep it short, but it's not that short, is it? Anyways, guys, um, as always, I appreciate you guys watching and commenting. Um, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. And then I will see you guys next week. Everyone have a wonderful weekend.